If you've ever looked into upgrading your CPU, you probably noticed that you also had to upgrade your motherboard in order for the CPU to fit, especially if you've waited a couple of years to do the upgrade. This is because every few years, or every two years, if you're using an Intel CPU, the socket changes, which means that the CPU pins are no longer going to line up in these same exact spots that they did previously on the earlier motherboard socket. Now, surprisingly, these socket changes are not just cash grabs by CPU manufacturers to get their poor consumers to spend more money. Although socket changes have recently been more frequent with Intel than AMD, so maybe it is a bit more of a cash grab on their end, but socket changes do actually happen for a good reason. If you've ever assembled a PC, you know that on the bottom of the CPU, there are usually a bunch of gold pins, or if you've only dealt with newer Intel CPUs, you would have seen something more like an array of flat gold contacts like this. But the idea behind both of these designs is still the same, so I'm just going to refer to them as pins. But each one of these pins on the CPU serves a specific purpose. Here I have a diagram of the pinouts for the TR4 socket that identifies what each one of these CPU pins are for. And as you can see, some of them are going to be for power delivery, others are going to be for transferring data back and forth between the CPU and the other components in your build. And these data pins, they actually become even more specialized since each one of them are wired to just one other motherboard bus. So some of these pins are specialized for communicating with something like USB. Others are specialized for communicating with the network or PCI Express. And there's also typically pins that are reserved. There's quite a few on this TR4 socket that are shown in the light gray here. And the purpose of these pins is to physically exist for future uses in case the manufacturer wants to have new features supported later. And we actually saw this with the release of PCI Express version 4. So many CPUs were built before this new bus became mainstream, before it was offered on a bunch of motherboards, and certainly before there were other components that could actually utilize it. But the pins were put in so that they could be activated by firmware and BIOS updates once there, there were actually products out that could take advantage of this new bus. Now, maybe you're wondering, if CPU manufacturers can just add reserve pins for something like a new PCI Express standard, why can't they just add reserve pins for all the new features that would conceivably come out in the next several years, like DDR5, USB 4.0, and 10 gigabit networking? Well, like I stated earlier, the pins on the socket are not just for data, but they are also for delivering power. And these newer CPUs that have more cores and higher clock speeds require more of it. So when you have a new CPU with increased core counts and clock speeds, you typically have to increase the number of pins that are used to actually provide power to that CPU as well. Power consumption also adds another reason for motherboard upgrades besides just the pins because even if a much older motherboard did have the correct number of pins to physically insert something like an i9 into it, the power delivery system of that older board wouldn't be able to handle the TDP of an i9. And you can even see this with some processors that do have the same socket type but they have a more significant difference in TDP. Some motherboard manufacturers might design their boards with better VRMs or just better specification for things like signal integrity. Uh, typically, they would do that by adding more layers to the motherboard or adding some more insulation to it. And there's one more reason for the chipset changes besides making more money, and it's actually something that is, in theory, good for the consumer, and that is compatibility.
If you've ever tried using a newer CPU with an older motherboard that it is supposed to work with, you probably discovered that the experience wasn't simply plug and play. Whenever you try doing this, a BIOS update is typically required to get the new CPU working with the old motherboard. But the problem is, you can't access your BIOS to do the update unless you have a working CPU, which means that you're going to need to get an older CPU temporarily to boot into the BIOS, apply the update, take the cooler off, remove the thermal paste, uh, you know, take it out of the case, all of that stuff, and remove the old CPU, then resume building the PC with the newer CPU. And even though companies like AMD will give you a loaner CPU for free to allow you to do this update, it's really the process of doing it that makes it daunting to new users who are the ones that are making up most of the desktop computer market share. They're you know, most of the new builds that are being built are probably being done by new users, um, not necessarily people who haven't really used a computer, but maybe people that are starting to just dip their toes into building a computer. And so naturally, the manufacturers, they want to make things as easy and accessible as possible to those novice users. And even if you're not a novice, you probably don't want to go through this process anyway. I mean, even if you're more experienced with building a computer, you want things to just work when you put it together. So in conclusion, socket changes, they're going to happen. There's a real reason for it besides just milking consumers for more of their hard-earned money. So even if CPU manufacturers all of a sudden want to become more benevolent, they're still going to have to change sockets to keep up with the new features and the TDP. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe with notifications on so you know when new videos are released. Bye now.